similar to the early Christian Gnostics, there existed a sect in southern France known as the Cathars, who considered themselves the only true Christians of their era. The Roman Orthodox Church vehemently disagreed with this, of course, so just like Gnosticism, Catharism was outlawed, and they too were hunted down as heretics. In fact, the Cathars were the first Christian group targeted by the Catholic Crusades, and the very first Inquisition was specifically created to torture Cathars. On June 22, 1209, Pope Innocent III sent his crusader army to the town of Beziers in the Languedoc province of southern France, who were celebrating their feast day of the Magdalene. Headed by Inquisitor Arnaud Amalric, the Catholic crusader army gathered outside the Beziers city walls and demanded an ultimatum of the townsfolk. They were allegedly harboring two hundred high-ranking Cathar leaders known as Perfecti within the city and were ordered to turn them over. The townsfolk refused and continued their feast day celebrations, which enraged and caused Inquisitor Amalric to declare that they shall all, quote, die as heretics rather than live as Christians. When asked by his army, how to determine which of the townsfolk were the Cathar leaders to be exterminated, he answered, Kill them all. God will know his own. Thus the crusaders sieged and sacked the town, murdering nearly twenty thousand people before the day was finished, mostly women and children. Crusades against the Cathars continued for the next forty years, until the entire sect was eliminated off the face of the earth. Their final stand occurred on March 16, 1244, at their fortress on Mount Segur. For nine months, the Crusader army was held at bay, until finally a siege of catapults succeeded in knocking down their castle walls, and the remaining 210 Cathar perfecti protected inside were burned at the stake. So who were these Cathars, and what did they believe? Why did they consider themselves, like the Gnostics, to be the only true Christians? And why were they deemed so hated and heretical by the Church of Rome, that they needed to be genocided. The Cathars viewed all of material reality, including our physical bodies, as nothing but a prison for our immortal souls. Like the Gnostics, they believed the creator god of the Old Testament was actually Satan, referred to in Cathar texts as Rex Mundi, the king of this world, whereas the god of the New Testament was the one true god of light and good. The Cathar creation story states that Rex Mundi ascended to the Pleroma, wanting to enter, but was refused. After patiently waiting for a thousand years, he successfully snuck into heaven, then promptly promised the heavenly angels every worldly pleasure to tempt them to leave with him. He said they were slaves, that God never gave them anything and owned everything around them, but if they followed him, he would provide them with wonderful riches, beautiful partners, and extravagant foods. For nine days and nine nights, Rex Mundi seduced the heavenly angels down through a hole in the Pleroma he had created and into his evil world, before the good God sealed it shut. Once the divine spirits had fallen, they found themselves in physical bodies, in a dense material realm, without any of the pleasures promised. When they repented and asked to return to heaven, Rex Mundi refused and replied that the physical bodies he had fashioned for them would now bind them to earth and make them forget all about their heavenly home. Meanwhile, the one true God, disappointed and distraught, decided the fallen angels needed to work towards his grace and forgiveness by struggling within these physical body prisons, and thus made a deal with the devil. Satan could do what he wanted with these physical bodies, but the individual souls which animated them belonged to God, and could return to him once they renounced the body and all of its temptations. The devil agreed to this deal, and the rest is human history. Trapped in these physical bodies, the individual soul essence was condemned to repeatedly live, die, and reincarnate into new bodies for as long as that soul remained attached to worldly things and desiring material pleasures. Thus, for the Cathars, the whole purpose of human existence is to repent and renounce our worldly desires and attachments in order to return to heaven. Our lives are seen as a dualistic struggle between the worldly temptations of the flesh and the spiritual peace of the soul. As Manny, the originator of Manichaeism, a forerunner to Catharism, stated, Souls are prisoners of darkness, and they must fight to recover their original destiny, 
abandoning the body that imprisons them. For the Cathars, all of material reality, including their physical bodies, were seen as a prison, caging their pure spiritual essence. They aimed to leave this world forever and return to paradise, believing that anyone who failed would be doomed to repeated reincarnations. Their solution was a sacred rite known as the Consolamentum, which was the cornerstone of Catharism. This ritual could only be performed by Cathar priests known as Perfecti, who were pairs of one man and one woman that lived together according to a strict set of rules. The Perfecti took vows of poverty, pacifism, vegetarianism, and antinatalism. Since they viewed all of material reality as evil, childbirth was discouraged and seen as a sin that condemned souls to be trapped in the reincarnation cycle. The last step to becoming a perfecti was completing the consolamentum ceremony and living a sinless life according to their vows until death, which they believed would allow them to return to heaven. Regular Cathars, known as credentes, also had the opportunity to perform the consolamentum once during their lifetime. But since the vows were so sacred and irreversible, most would only do so on their deathbeds, often refusing food and water afterwards. The consolamentum washed away their sins, but bound them by oath to pure principles thereafter. So performing the ritual late in life was actually advised, making it easier to live one's last days in a sinless state. Howdy Makowski wrote, It was deemed the baptism of Holy Spirit by fire, like the Pentecost, considered the real teaching of Christ, that was supposed to remove all sin once the ceremony concluded. As mentioned earlier, once you had a consolamentum ceremony, you could not have another, because after completing the ceremony, one could no longer sin. Most would have this ceremony as death was approaching, for the likelihood of further sin was greatly reduced. Only perfecti could administer the consolamentum, and from what has been preserved, it seems amazingly simple. It included the reading of several biblical passages with a focus on the Gospel of John and the Lord's Prayer, many calls for the good God to remove all sin, and ended with an experience referred to as the laying of hands upon the person. The Cathars held as their main belief that this was a world created by an evil god, Rex Mundi, who kept them in a reincarnation cycle, and their only focus in this life was to escape it. The Cathars were not concerned with making this place better, finding new forms of government or commerce or anything else. Their focus was to escape the evil realm of the Rex Mundi forever and return home to the Father. The Cathars had no fear of going to hell after death because they felt that the only hell that existed was this material realm. Reincarnation was the fear, for it is what would force them back into a body and therefore back into hell.